Can you email us these PowerPoints? I'll just write on that. <laughs> Ask Jackie, can you see what she says? <laughs> yeah, but I'm fully charged. Sweet. Because that would make it a lot simpler, so I wouldn't have to take out the pictures. I like pictures. <laughs> <laughs> So the underwriting or best efforts from coming to standby, are there any more? Should you remember what the other three are? No. Um, Best efforts. They sell what they can. Yes, yeah, so they, they can. can sell. Then they Earth Amendment is a which is guarantee to sell a certain amount. And all or none is they sell, either they sell all of it or they don't sell any of it. Then it means that they have to say the company needs 20 mil. If they don't sell the whole 20 million, they just can't sell the whole transaction. Oh, so they sell all, all they re required or, or they cancel everything? Uh, they didn't doesn't apply. Okay. Which is the one that um, they resell it and then if they don't sell the amount, they re they buy it back or they pay for it? They buy it back? Or, or I mean, they buy, they buy it. I think that's all or none. That, oh, no. If they, they don't sell it, then they just refund everyone's money. No, no, if they buy it back, then it's called treasury stock. No, 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 I did I said the wrong word. But what, don't you like, say you have $10 million to, you have to, you've agreed to it as an investment issuer, um, then then you sell like $5 million. Isn't there one that underwriting that required the issuer to pay for it? The issuer is the one who's raising the money, so. No, I know, but by selling it to people. If you can't sell it, doesn't isn't there one that you have to pay? No. Yeah, he has to pay now. Okay. You want me to take over? Oh. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> so that way I could be the buy the uh, electricity because that's the key point. Yeah. All right. If you want me to call your wife and ask you, oh no, you're not married, never mind, I'll call. I'm not married, yeah. I've got Ivan's wife to come over and help. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a workout? If she's at the club, she's not too far away. Yeah. That she is far, the, on one of the Los Gatos one. Ah. That's the far one. <laughs> ah. uh. All right. Probably. Lock the doors to nobody's kitchen. All right. Can you sit on the corner so I can see the screen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Is that good? That doesn't bother me at all. Okay. If you would have sat in the middle, though, you know what I mean? <laughs> right here? Yeah. That's that'd good. Be, that'd, that'd be nice. Does this block your view? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. All right, that's so there it is. Okay. So we have no all four of these, okay? Usually, the kind of a combination of a couple of different things we talked about, so I couldn't figure out which one for sure I'm really <laughs> hitting it at. So, preliminary threat taxes is anything that's a new issue, we have to give it out. Uh, sometimes we call it the red herring. So, before they get approved, we can give out a red herring or preliminary prospectus. And once it's approved, we can get it out of the regular uh, prospectus. So, uh, the so red herring is prior to approval? Yeah.
I've never seen a phrase like this. I've always seen the opposite, where it's like uh, the opposite. So, what's a red herring? Or what? Yeah, what is a red herring? Never a plenary perspective. Yeah, because the perspective itself has to be red. Yeah. Uh, Why red? Uh, so people know that it has not been approved yet. Oh. For sale. Oh, okay. It's really red. Yeah. Uh, Usually half of it's red. Okay. Most of the perspectives are like black. We used to have an office, a whole bunch of them. So when people come in now, technically by law, since it's everything's online, mm -hmm. we just say, hey, go to this website, do you see this perspective, it's done deal. No one even looks at it anyways. Yeah, nobody Yeah, I was gonna say, it, you handed out a lot of them, but there's, nobody reads it. So when you put it in the broker's name, it's called the street name. Well, not actually. Mike would be the actual owner. Mm -hmm. He's the beneficial owner. Acting as a broker dealer, a nominal owner. I never. I don't think I've seen that term, nominal owner. Well, because he's not really the owner. Where the real owner is Mike, so he actually would benefit. But street name is then the name of the broker dealer. So what? So that's like pretty much all the all everything I got in my portfolio is in that, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So the street name is the and who name. was your investment advisor? Oh, was that you? <laughs> For, yeah. Okay. So beneficial would mean the the name on the stock certificate? Well, in a technical sense, it's showing up on the books that it belongs to Acme Broker Dealer. Mm -hmm. But the one who benefits is the actual owner. Which would be Mike. You, yeah. Which you can actually say to the company, mm -hmm. please send me my certificate showing I own this stock. You can stuff them someplace okay. if you want to. Then if you decide to sell the shares, they have to be in perfect shape. So if they're mutilated, any of them cut, uh, tore, then you have to get new issue from the custodian or the transfer agent. Okay. That's why people keep them with the broker dealer. Yeah, because I can't think of that many instances where people have actual stock certificates. Today. Yeah, most people don't. I've never even heard of anyone in the last 20 years having one, right? You can ask for it. Yeah, I had to uh, get some replaced because I ended up with some, uh, and I don't even know how, but they were torn, and so uh, I didn't even know if they were worth anything. I just called in and was like, I have these stock certificates, I have no idea if they're worth anything. That's funny. And they replaced them, so. So they were they worth gave, something. They were worth something, yeah. But who owned them? I don't even remember. I think it was my, a relative of mine some, somewhere. So somehow you ended up as being a beneficiary for those. Mm -hmm. That's why they replaced yeah, them. I can't remember where <laughs> they came from. Why did you replace them? Why don't you just say, can you own these and if I decide to sell them? Well, that's they did. They, they moved into my stock broker account. So I had to get them replaced from the company and then I sent them into Good. Schwab. Good. Because I was like, I don't want to hold on to these. Yeah. It's like holding cash. It's worse. I mean, if cash gets stored, you, you can still use it. Yeah. <laughs> like traveler's checks. <laughs> yeah. I got a funny story about that too. So I went, uh, I went to Europe in 2005. Oh. And before that, I had gone there in, after I graduated uh, in 89. 
and you need traveler's checks then. So in 2005, you didn't need, I thought you still need traveler's checks. So I got like a couple thousand dollars worth, went over there, nobody would take them. They wouldn't even cash it. <laughs> so I literally brought all 2,000 back, and I had to ch ch exchange it with the bank. Oh my God, that's a good story. Wow. So, nobody would take them, like many of the banks over there. They like American money. Well, they, they, everyone takes credit cards now. In 89, no one took credit cards. Wow. Definitely not Europe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now everyone takes credit cards in Europe. They don't take traveler's checks. So. I learned a lesson on that one. So since you learned something from that, what's the answer on this? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which of these would be considered a wash sale? tell you why this is a little tricky. A uh, warrant itself says you can buy this stock at a set price. So that's where this gets a little bit tricky. So anytime you sell or buy within the 30 day period, a stock, a warrant gives you the option of buying that stock, mm -hmm. then you won't be able to uh, take the loss. You won't do it. Uh, yeah, I would have guessed just because of the 29 days, yeah. not looking at the warrant part. But. And sometimes that helps. You look for certain things mm -hmm. in perfection, and that helps. I know it has to be less than 30 days, yeah. I think you're supposed to get all these. Oh, no. <laughs> the price a call writer is required to sell a stock at is. Is a uh, price a call writer is supposed to sell a stock at strike price. Yep. Did you buy some options before? No. It's kind of sounded like you knew something about it. I think maybe you bought it. I discussed it with people, like, you know, yes or no, and then I wasn't allowed to go in that transaction with my broker, so I never did it. <laughs> I had to talk them out of it. <laughs> okay, Ivan. Make sure the quality would not be a problem. Ten. Now, see. You don't hire the executive or the CEO. You can attend shareholder meetings, you can vote on mergers, acquisitions, stock splits. You can sign your votes or proxy to somebody else. You can't hire them. Okay, David. Yeah. How about all the insurance guys now that are out acting like financial advisors? How do they not get in trouble? I've been to networking events where they where you know they're insurance guys, but they're financial advisors, and they never did anything. Well, it comes with the, your business also. No, no, but they say they're financial advisors. They do. Uh, uh, simply because they do have, say, uh, securities license. No, some of them are straight life. That's pretty illegal, isn't it? No, because uh, they are giving financial advice. Laws are not paid yes, for it. you do fixed products. And laws are not paid for it. Well, I guess, but they, I've heard people advise on like mutual fund trades and stuff that aren't. If they do charge a fee, there's uh, uh, another insurance license, an investment analyst license or something like that. You know, uh, you do that. Yeah. Most people don't get that one. 
Uh, see, who did this one? You did that, so back to you, David. Okay. We can talk about this. So, so I'll, I'll take you off the hook on this one. Uh, the first market is a listed security trading over um, selling on the exchange. So, so it's not negotiated though. Yeah, it's not negotiated. It's an issuer, right? Yeah. First market? Yeah. So um, what was the last thing you said? That uh, the first market is, set, is it, there's an issuer. It's not negotiated, right? It's no, that's primary market. Primary, so that's different yeah. than first market. You have primary market, secondary market, and the secondary, you got first market, second market, third market, fourth market. First market is a list of security trading on the exchange. So within that, you have a specialist. Uh, on the over-the-counter, it's a negotiated market. You get to negotiate as to what you want to pay for the stock. Okay. So that's why we got this little blue thing down here. The first market is an auction market. Oh. So we have a specialist here, then on the second market, which is other securities, uh, we have market makers. Who are you going to negotiate with? Okay. <coughs> spread. And if the spread is, uh, say, $16.58 and $17, what does that tell you? That's a rip off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Worth is for sixteen dollars and nineteen dollars. <laughs> so, when the spread is big, uh -huh. that means there's, there's not too much interest in the security. Oh, okay. If the numbers are close to each other, it means it's selling a lot. A lot of people are interested in that stock. Oh, okay. So, looking at the stock the other day, and the difference was like three dollars. So that I'm going to skip on this one. So that means I don't have that many people interested in buying or selling this particular stock. Here it's usually 50%. Yeah, 50%. But paint with margin. But the first trade if you, is 100%, right? If you're um, opening a margin account, then you have to have 100% of your. It has to, to be able to have a margin, you gotta have at least 2,000 in there. Yeah, two thousand. But isn't there a rule about the first trade being at a hundred percent? No. No. Okay. So if you do ten thousand dollars in, let's say, let's say you don't have swap, let's say, you, let's say you don't have fidelity, you open the account with fidelity for two thousand, you are not going to have a margin account. Okay. Hey, you got a question for you. So this reg U and all these different regs, like I can recognize it when it's explained. Do you have to remember every single one of them? Well, there's only two of these. No, no, but there's like 1934, 19, I can't. Well, 33, 34, the investment act in 1970. Do you have to That's only five. Okay. I just figure them out when the question comes up, but I can't name them, you know? Uh, so on regulation U is where the bank charges the broker to borrow money, and T is where the broker charges you to borrow the money. So the banks usually charge the broker dealer like 1.5%, then the broker dealer charges you like 11%. It'd be 1.1 plus 10%. So reg U is where the banks charge the broker dealer, reg T is where the broker dealer charges you. Broker
No, a broker dealer cannot recommend a skinny. What's the broker dealer is a market maker. So he's, so if he's a market maker, that means people are coming to him to buy this particular stock. So he can't recommend it. Yeah. Excuse me. Five. Conflict of interest. If he's the lead underwriter uh, from the uh, broker dealer, he can't recommend it. Is the financial interest he can't recommend it? So all of the above as well. Okay. So this would be you guys. You guys are registered rep with Swab. She's interested in pushing a hot new issue. She can't do it. Not till it cools down. So. Yeah. Her spouse can't purchase it. How far does that go on there? Um, spouse can't, mother and father can they? Mother and father can. But uh, you're 18, let me give mom and dad that would be. Yeah, yeah, a little red flag. Yeah. So what about if they're 18 and living on their own? <coughs> then that's uh, fine. That's fine? Yeah. No. So then you have insider trading issues. What would be the insider right. trading issues? Well, I guess if, if the parent. Inside of me, you know something that other people don't know. Okay. So if you work for a broker dealer, you said, God dang, we heard on the phone, this guy's going to buy 500,000 shares of uh, Chewy. So I go buy it now because I know the price is going to go up. That would be insider. Okay. So keep that between us. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of like inside of trading too. Well, which one is cash? Both. Yeah. Oh. So you overthink on that one. Yeah, I, I would not pick loans. Loans. Loans and cash go together. Got your name on it, David. Twenty plus the four, last twenty-five, so be a dollar. <laughs> I'm not too sure how you calculated that one. Yeah. So intrinsic means anytime it goes over twenty, because this is a call option, right? You have the value. You know. Okay. Oh, so it's five dollars. Uh huh. Okay. So if this option was expiring, like in two days, mm -hmm. uh, well, Friday, tomorrow, I would, ex in, in the current market value is $21, it has an intrinsic value. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that in tomorrow, mm -hmm. or today. I'll lose some money, but I get some of my money back. You're gonna take something for sure. Yeah. Instead of letting it go. Yep. Yeah, I struggle with these. Yeah. In Europe, you can't exercise your option until the last day of the trade, of the option period. In the United States, you can do it any time during the option period. Hmm. 33 is always paper. So it's, it's paper. 270. Is that the 270 and less? 
first issue. 270 days or less, is that the one? Uh, what's that? Commercial money markets, is that the oh, one? No, commercial papers uh, means it's not classified as security. Okay. Because uh, it expires in 270 days. Oh, shit. So 33 is paper, 34 is people. So 33 is anything that's brand new, first time issue. Oh, that was an easy answer. Um. Uh. Oh, new issue B. What's the answer? B. And then boy. So it's new issue. Let me just ask you a personal question. Do you see this word or not? Ah! That little word gets me every time. My worst. If you want to, you can move your table. I think, it's, I think it's A. <laughs> yeah. Right? What's that? I think it's uh, A. Is not. Because this is 34. So anything the second time, first time is primary, so for the first time, not for the second time. Pay attention to it. I'm not worried. Move the table up another inch. <laughs> yeah, move, move a little closer. <laughs> Which of the following would be allowable by a broker dealer? You can't give them anything over a hundred bucks. Allowable. So it'd be D. Everyone breaks that rule, though. I don't know if they break that rule. Um, what's the answer on this one, Ivan? D. Your best I, did you read or, this? No, maybe not. Um, which would, which of the following would be allowable? Oh, you can't give them four hundred dollars either. Um, Two hundred for eight. Two hundred is more than a hundred. But it's a gift card. Taking the so, Hamilton. Giving what's Hamilton? Tickets to what's a Hamilton? football game? Oh. No, but what's Hamilton? It's a play. Play. It, oh, I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Your, oh. your wife would love you to take her to that. Oh. I think it's playing in New York at this time. Though. Is it a good one or something? Oh yeah, oh. one of the best. Oh. So I would get myself in trouble big time there. Really? You know what? Why? Oh. <laughs> you might. This might like this. Some one. of them are good though. Yeah. This is probably the best one of the last ten years. Be oh. Why would? That be allowable. So you can, uh, if you're gonna go see the 49ers, tickets are $250 a pop. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You can't give them season tickets, but you can give them tickets to an event. To one event. Yes. Okay. But then another one after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you then give them like tickets the next month? I don't think so. Uh, this is in a calendar year. So, so what is it one like? event per year? Yeah. Okay. So See, it's one event. That's why B is wrong. Uh, hundred dollars a quarter. So only hundred dollars per year. It's a year. Yeah. Wow. So the max is a hundred dollars a year. But as long as you're not giving them money, you're okay to do it. So, so I apologize on that. So yeah, you give them. You can take them to dinner next month. Mm -hmm. You just can't give them anything that's. Cash. We had to document uh, when you did yeah. like wine or whatever you give them yeah. for Christmas and dinner. Or the bottle of wine, you got to document it. Oh, really? They used to be $50. And, and back then, I mean, a $50 bottle of wine is nothing special. Right? <laughs> so $100 a year or one event? You can take them to that. You can take them to another event. Because they don't consider that to be cash. Kawhi can't take it with them. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so remember, security is anything. Uh, an exempt security is one that is not a security. So like commercial paper is not a security. It's an exempt security. So these I, are all securities, these three here. Treasury uh, note? D. 
this Jenny May is actually a REIT. Corporal Bond is a bond from a corporation, <laughs> Treasury note, so. Whoa, corporate bond. Hold on a second. Oh, um, oh it says we're not being exempt. Oh, I missed the word not. You need me to move your table closer? I need. <laughs> God damn I got an extra seat here. <laughs> not be a uh, an exempt security. So not be a security. So what exempt means is it's exempt from registration. Is it a hey, exempt I never from understood that exempt versus non-exempt. I always got the question wrong always, even before. Can you go over a little bit of that? Well, exempt security means it doesn't have to be registered. I know, but then how do you know which one's which? That was that was always like my heart all, all from day one. Well, commercial so, papers exempt because they don't have to register. Because they're not security. Well, it's two hundred seventy days, right? Yeah. Treasury note is issued by the government, and Ginny May is issued by the government, right? So, oh. so your government security is always exempt oh. from registration. I always got those. Right. I just guessed on them. But Ginny May is exempt because of that, and commercial paper because it's not a security. Mm -hmm. So corporate bond would not be an exempt security. You'd have to register really? that for the SEC. Makes sense. Exempt, exempt, exempt. Not exempt. I think we already had this, so maybe you guys probably can figure this well. So when you do something online uh, and if it tells you to recommend you buy a particular security, uh, you can't do that. If it's asking you for information, uh, and it's going, it's, what do you call that? It's static. Uh, that's okay to do, as long as they don't ask you or recommend a particular security. So, then we consider static content to a site to be retail, yes. But what is static content? means you get to interact with the computer or with the website. So like you mean your personal website, you can change it? Is that what you mean? You or, can, or, or like a chat? Like some websites, you can't do anything. You can't add your name. You can't ask your questions. They can't ask you for your information. Do you, would you like to, are you thinking about buying stocks? It's just a page. Oh, okay. okay. Static content on your website can be retail communication. See, pre approval would be why he recommends a specific security. So he's not allowed to do that. So this is wrong. And I'm making sure because I, I just read some of these words. Yep, so you got to send information. Because the limit is 25. Over 20, right? 25, you got to get broker approval, right? Yeah. Days of planning, office time planning, dinner, seminar, scripted is considered retail. So, so pre approval is required because he's recommending a specific security. I'm kind of glad you're taking these pictures to me because I don't need to send this to you. Oh, I still want to. I would still like that. I'll t stop taking pictures. No, 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 keep going. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's a bonker at the highest bid in the year. Which one's going to give you more income? What you're saying? Equity. Equity income fund. So, yeah. equity income is pretty good. Uh, it's income fund. The balance is half and half, so this is still better than this. This is not giving you any equity because it's an emerging market fund, uh, but it's a market fund. Market fund means it is paying you like a money market. This is none at all, so I like that one. See, balance is a combination of equity and debt. But the key word was income on this one. So 
33 is the paper act, 34 is the people act. Should be uh, A, I'm, I'm gonna guess it this one. No, it's B. So it's secondary. Oh, so margins are for secondary issues. So yeah. What's the Melonia? Maloney act actually created FINRA. Oh. So the old fashioned FINRA. Do we need Reese for a moment? Yep. Why did FINRA become FINRA instead of NASD? It used to be NASD. Well, NASD is National Association of Security Dealers. Yeah, yeah. So that's not FINRA. But it didn't go, it just went by NASD before. No, no, NASD is the National Association of uh, Security Dealers. Uh -huh. That's where they meet once or twice a year to okay. talk about the issues that go from state to state or anything else that might help another state out. Okay. Yeah, but it's not FINRA. Okay. Uh, there was another name, so Maloney Act, FINRA, and there's another name in there someplace. I forgot what the other name was. But it wasn't NASD. Credited. Yes. This is the definition. This is Give the away. general definition mm -hmm. of a creditor investor. And the other part of that is you have to make mm -hmm. more than three hundred thousand a year. Two million two fifty. 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 Oh, your turn. Who buys a call, call up, is bullish. I can do the straightforward questions. It's yeah, same here. <laughs> but the other ones, when they twist them. And accepts yeah. and accept nots. Well, yeah. You should be able to make the box also for this. The one you showed us earlier? Yeah. Because uh, that's what you're going to have to know. Here we're just trying to see if you understand the difference between bullish and bearish. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Okay. if I was doing that box, some people do it a little bit different. Whatever works for you, and go ahead. One of these, I'm good shape. So if I have a writer uh, and we have a call option and we have a put option, uh, and then we have the buyer, uh, this guy is obligated. <coughs> this guy is obligated. This guy is not obligated. This guy is not obligated. Buyer pays a premium. Pays a premium. This guy has to sell. Wait, what, what is that one under not obligated? Is that, what does that say? Pays mm, under. Yeah, right there. Not, not obligated. obligated. What's not that? obligated. No, no, right above it. Pays a premium. Oh, pays premium, yeah. Okay. So if this is here and this is here, then there's got to be the opposite of here. This guy does not pay a premium, he receives a premium. Receives the premium. Uh, the buyer is assuming that the stock is going to go up. This guy is assuming the stock is going to go down. If this guy is down, then this guy thinks the stock is also going to go up. If these two would match, these two would match. And this guy thinks it's going to go down. This one has to uh, buy the stock from the buyer. 
this one has to sell the stock. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, this is the opposite. He buys the stock from the buyer. He sells the stock. So it would sell? Yeah. Sell stock, sell stock, okay. So everything is always the opposite. Sells, buys, uh, he now can buy from him at this uh, strike price and we'll say it's 50 bucks. So that'd be your strike price. Receives the premium, pays the premium. Um, what else do you think we need to put on this? How do I end the money and how does money? What does that say? That's if there's intrinsic value, right? Well, if you're out of the money, that means it ain't going your direction. You know? Okay. So if you buy a call, you're definitely in the money. Well, only if it goes in your direction. Yeah, right? no, okay. Does that get really quick covered, you know, naked? Because uh, they won't do this to you on, on this particular test. But uh, if, if the writer of the call owns the stock, he is long the position, but when he buys the option, he is now long the position because he has control of the option. So once he sells it to him, he is long. Is he naked or is he covered? That's the problem at that point. Is he naked or covered? Well, if he owns it, then he's, he's covered. covered. Yeah. If he doesn't own it, then he's naked. Yeah. So if you can do that, uh, you're pretty much ahead of the game. Uh, so call up, put down. He is also put, he gets to put it to this guy, which means he can sell his stock to that guy and that guy has to buy it. So he gets to sell his stock mm -hmm. to him, the writer of the foot. The and the writer of the foot has to buy it at that price. The writer so, of, the, of the foot. So if the stock is 50 and the stock goes down to 42, uh -huh. he can now sell the stock to this guy at 50 bucks. Okay. And he swallows it eight bucks ish, right? Well, yeah, if he uh, <coughs> if he's the short, if he already has the stock and the stock goes down, the other he guy still has, gets the, the stock. The other guy has to pay him 50 bucks. Yeah. Yep. So if you just want to make sure you're going to make money on this over the next nine months, you could do that. But then you're losing the three dollars you gave him a premium. What's this one, Ivan? The investor buys a put call option. Um, bearish. How do you how do you figure that one on the chart? I'm trying to. I just knew from memory that one. Well, again, if you think it's going down, you're bearish. If you think it's going up, you're bullish. No, no, no. But an investor who buys a put option, how do you? Like, I just knew that one from memory. Well, the only thing the difference between this guy and this guy is, in reference to what you're talking about, he now okay. gets to buy the stock from him at that price. Oh, okay, okay. It's got to be the opposite. Oh, so that was pointing down and you just automatically. Okay. Got it. Wait. So <laughs> this one, he sells you the stock, this Wait. one's got to buy yeah. your stock. I just knew that one, but I was trying to figure out in my head how to plug it in the chart. 
So when you're buying stock, uh, what most people do is they just do market orders. So if I see this, and I do that, I did that today. I saw the stock dropping for one particular stock, and whoa, it's going down, down, down. So I put a market order in to buy it at that price. Now, if I put a limit order in, that means it's got to go past that price and I'll buy it. So if I put a limit order to buy or sell, so if I'm selling a stock, uh, the price has to go above that point to sell it. If I'm buying, it's got to go below that point before I'll buy it. So let's say it's 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 three o'clock in the morning. I go to the computer. I want to, I want to buy the stock at ten dollars. I'll put a limit order in at ten dollars. So now uh, next day at one o'clock, I can look to see if I bought it. But it has to go past the ten dollars before I'll buy it. Stop order means as soon as it hits that number. Whatever the value is next, you'll buy it. That's the stop order. Whether it's higher or lower, you get that price. You can do what's called stop and limit order, which means the first thing it hits, that price. Now the second time, it's got to go above that price. Then you buy it. It's called a stop and limit order. So you might need to stop the limit order just to make sure it's going above what you really want it to go to, instead of it dropping back down again. So if, it, if you do a stop limit order, like for $10, if it doesn't go above $10, if it goes to $9.92, you won't buy it. So you're selling? Yeah. So no, if you're buying, if you put a stop, so we're doing a stop limit order for buying or selling? For buying. For buying? Yeah. So if you put it at $10 and it doesn't go to nine, then they won't exit. No, 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 if it go, if stop limit order has to go above $10, right? Then you said to buy. So if I'm buying, I want it to go down. Oh, okay, you're right, you're right, I got you. You know, I run across people who don't even know what this is. They just put an order to buy. This way they have to watch the goddamn screen all day long waiting to see if it's gonna go down to their price. <laughs> Sounds like fun. So Stop at a price or better, it has to be a limit. A limit order. Yeah. Because if, if it hits and goes back the other way, then that would be a uh, stop order. Business cycle is on your test. <clears throat> so, if it's a new company, if the stock is going up, it's expanding. Then, once it reaches this top, it's the peak. Then it comes down, it's contracting. When it gets to the bottom, it's a chop. When it goes back up again, it's expansion. So, it's peak. I think so. So, you have to know that order for the test. Expansion. It's like an IPO. At first it'll go up, it'll peak, then it starts to go down, <coughs> and then go back. Uh, then, then at the bottom, it stays a little bit like that for a day, or for two hours, whatever, it's called the trough. Then it goes back up again, so it all starts all over again. This one's, uh, I was trying to think of an acronym for this one. I really couldn't think of one. 
E, P, C, T, but can be nothing too many cells. <laughs> if this is going up, if this is staying at the bottom. Contraction means it's going down. Okay, David. Trying to trick you a little bit here, too, David. Uh, nope. Oh, there's better. Issues eight. Now, if the current share is a quick share of the stock of 10, this is a warranty. So let's say we just read the second line and the third line. Shareholders to purchase shares at $10, the shares are currently trading at 11. If the corporation says to you, hey, the shares are selling right now at 11, we'll let you buy them, the shares at 10. That's how you get to watch. That's the right. Yeah. So it's a right. This, this word option, uh -huh. that's what tricks people. It's not a call or a put. Okay. The warrant is always way above the $11. What do you mean? What do you mean, way above? Well, if they issue you a warrant, uh, let's say for this, yeah. for selling 11, if they issue you a warrant, it'd be at, say, $70. What, the price of the, war the current? The warrant says, the current anytime price? in the next 10 years, you can buy the stock at $70. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's a warrant. And this is then the right short term? Short term, right? Mm -hmm. Right is always below the current market value. Okay. No, no, but it's short term, not for long term, like the warrant. Yes, rights are short term and warrants are long term. Okay. But people, when this is option, they're, they're looking at this guy and this guy. I know. They're guilty. Yeah. That's right. And it's issued below market price. Uh, yeah, rice always says before below the market value. Okay. Okay, Ivan. Which of the following is true about US Treasury? Must be issued with trust and venture. Interest. Wait a second. The Treasury or the U.S. No, government? the U.S. Treasury don't have don't a trust and venture. Only for this bond okay, act. Yeah, okay, okay. It's not A for sure. It's not B. Um, it's D. Because it's sold at a discount. Yeah. Because it's sold at a discount. Oh, yeah. Bills are a discount under a year. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when they're showing a discount, that means it matures the value. Wait, wait, but don't they make, oh, oh, I was thinking dividends. Nah, that's what got me. That's why they pick C. You could have your wife take this test for you. Good luck. Oh, I had a, uh, some of you contractors also, so I had a lady come to my office, she said, hey, I gotta talk to you. My husband's been in the construction business for 20 years, but he's stupid. And I want him to get the license. But he's too stupid to pass the test. Can I take the test for him? I said, are you legally his wife? She said, yes. Then you're allowed to take the test for him. And have you done anything in construction? She says, no. So I'm not said, stupid. <laughs> uh, but see, our con contractor's books has all the questions answered for the test. Oh, nice. He's memorized it. So she went and took the test. Three weeks later, passed the test. But you know what? I have a client, no, same thing. English is the second language. He's kind of dumb with that. And the wife is it. If the license is in her name. Yep. He's doing all the work. Yep. yep. Really? You know. It, but it's kind of shady because he has to, she has to sign off on everything. Yep. Like when, when he uh, approves some work, she signs off. She's the licensed contractor. I know, but she wow. has no idea. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He just says sign this. No, no, like you know, you know when you get like something on your house, like when I buy a house, 
um, you know, when then I sold it, everything had to be up to code. So the contractor had to approve that it's up to code. <laughs> Why did you have to sell a house and everything had to be up to code? Because the buyer requested it. Oh, that that's was one thing. Uh, there was one thing and we had the, from the inspection. Wow. So you must have been good in top dollar to abide by the buyer to do that. Um, I just wanted to get rid of it faster. Yeah, because if you do conventional, the limb defense are required. No, no, this, is, this is 15 years ago. Yeah. Things, are, things were different. <laughs> they don't require it, but, you know. Yeah. We kind of talked about this. All of the above. You can't say all oh, of the above. Oh, never mind. B is not for sure. B is not for sure. So it's that D, yeah. Uh, it's or it's a, a probably. I'd say pre-approval C. Yeah, see, always is too much. Oh. oh, yeah, you said don't use always. Yeah. Never choose the always. Yes. Oh, yeah, good remember. Now, three of these so, so those are two same, basically, answers except always. Front runner means you're buying the stock before somebody else is. required to disclose everything to the client. So a great point is, usually on the mutual funds, it, I'm going to say, David, you're going to buy these mutual funds. If you put in $500, you got to pay 8.5. If you put in $10,000, you're going to pay 8%. Uh, if you sign an LOI, letter of intent, uh, you get a lower rate right now. So. Uh, and well, then LOI is 90 days or 90 or how long was it? Nine months? Four months. Four months? For what? Uh, if you, for a break point. If you sign it. No, no, no. No, there's three three types of break points. One no, is, no, no. But you, you get a break point, but then you have to send a letter of intent that you're going to. Oh, and a letter of intent. Yeah. Uh, you, you can sign a letter of intent how long can you? for 13 months. 13 months. Okay. 13 months. If you don't put the money in, then they have a right to cancel it out and you have to pay what you should have paid before. Would they actually? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So what's the answer to this one? Uh, Common sense. A or D? That's not common sense. A or D? <laughs> C. No. All clients, you got to tell all the clients about this. No matter what. Even if they oh, give you $10,000? Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so, you know, there's people who, let's say you come to my office and say, I'm going to put 3000 in the uh, future. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you know, if you put $10,000, your, your, uh, your sales charge for this will be less. Oh. Do they have rent points that low? Uh, so, the sales charge in real life, I mean, for test wise, the maximum is 8.5. Yeah, I know that. On uh, the next level down, a lot of companies will go 8%, then 7.5, 6 and 3 quarters, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So you can do break points three ways. One is quantity purchases, yeah. the second is the LOI, the third one is appreciation. Okay. So. How does the appreciation? Well, Broke. let's say you buy nine, uh, you buy some stocks at 6,000, mutual fund at 6,000, now the mutual fund goes up to 8,000 in value. Mm -hmm. Now you put five hundred dollars more in, then you're at. Uh, I'm sorry, you put another two thousand dollars in, you're at the next break point. You can use depreciation to help you reach the break point. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. But that's the only thing you need to know. You're ahead of the game. <laughs> Apparently, that, well, I've learned there's a lot of other things I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem.
secondary market. See. No, people get together, auction the market. Good. Auction? Yeah, if it's on a computer, then that's called the negotiated market. The first word, auction market. So it's a physical location with some New York Stock Exchange, a guy on the floor. Yeah. He's called the specialist, he's trying to sell a particular stock. And basically everything is done on the computer, but people can say, uh, I'll buy you this. So if he has a particular company he wants to buy 50,000, they don't even tell, it doesn't show up in the system. Okay. Who issues the ADRs? US, US, US banks. US um, banks, yeah. US banks. So again, the ADR shows that this ADR uh, shows that you own shares from a company over in Egypt. I told you about this. Thinly traded. Thinly traded. And that's what you want. Uh, I'm sorry, you, the widespread between the mass I mean, there's not much trading going on. It's what it's saying to us. If it's heavily traded, then the bid and ask are pretty close to each other. Market <coughs> makers only work over the counter. Specialists work on the exchange. Uh, auction, exchange. I'm sorry, auction, negotiated market. No, auction, back to the exchanges. So sorry about that. And the last is just to screw us up. That's just the price of 12 or 5. No, this is the last time it shows. So what they do is this is usually at the end of this, to be honest with you. Uh, but this tells you what it sold for yesterday. Oh, last is for indicates yesterday? Uh, okay, it says a uh, stock, yeah. so wouldn't it be, that would be the last? Trade, right? The day before. Usually it's the day before. Last is yeah. the day before. Yeah. This is the current. Currently it's trading at 12 and 2 and the ass is 12 10. 12 10 and see. Uh, but what they do is uh, you can see the prices for the day, the, the mm -hmm. last, the highest traded. Uh, you find if the this opened up today, what it traded last for yesterday. So yeah, usually last means the previous day. Okay, so so it's the ask then, twelve ten. So in order to place a market order to buy, you buy at the ask, right? Yeah. Okay. You sell at the bid. Or you buy at the bid. Which one? Senior. So a com oops. A convertible means it's you can convert to preferred to common stock. So on the certificate we'll tell you how many shares you can convert to. Callable means it can be called back by the corporation. Cumulative means any arrears missed as far as dividend payments, you get paid the arrears also. So by reading these answers, these from four different fund complexes, I would tell them to select one of the one of the four four and buy everything out of that one fund. Because otherwise, he's going to get a, a a different sales charge if he puts it in the four. Well, great points it could be. Uh, yep. B. Good yeah. job.
So the top is expansion going up. Then the top is peak, peak coming down. Contraction. Bottom is drop. What is it? Expansion. Yeah. What time is it? 3, 42. Good. Break time. And yeah, we'll read that from right here. And the secondary partition. Well, it can't be primary. Primary is the first time it's ever sold. Mm -hmm. It can't be through private placement. It's not a private placement. In the solicitor, well, it's not, share. not directly with the issuer because yeah. that would be primary again. Secondary. There really only is at least one. Yeah. Good job, but we're not showing sure you another slide, otherwise, we'll be here again. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling us we're cut off. Yeah. <laughs> we're on to you.
What's our receipt on? He's down for the day after this? I would hope so. Uh, five, like five or so. No, no, what's our receipt on? He's oh. the owner, he's teaching a number of people. Oh, fair enough. I think five. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good class, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping uh, all the questions that we've gone over. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you get the easy ones come there. through. Need some yeah. water. Yeah. Hopefully not too many of those options and, and uh, puts. Sure, for installing blinds, it's got to be tough. Yeah. I'm sure, they get a lot of bids for blinds. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Because I'm sure they break off and fall like that. Yeah, you definitely need blinds here, especially in the summer. Yeah. Some good ones. Well, it probably depends if you're facing east or west. Yeah, that's the key. If you're somewhere in the middle, then you're probably okay. But these are all mirrored on the outside, so no, yeah, it shouldn't be too much. And these are thick windows. Mm -hmm. You're lucky you're doing it right away. A lot of time to overthink it for me. Yeah. So are you attached with a broker dealer or are you um, on your own? Or? Well, I have, I can get attached because okay. um, I know people, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do, I'm going to do it, you know, independent broker dealers do, right? That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So you basically have your own company mm -hmm. versus um, working for someone. Okay. Oh, no, that's good. Because I already have the company part in, so just like that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. So when you did you keep your company in place like when you uh, went overseas? Yeah. Okay. Because it still has some revenue, not a lot, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Still. That's good. Yeah. Changed the office. Cut it down. Uh huh. Oh, I bet. So is it just you? Um, in, me, in an me, office? And another, me and and then I have another guy who's contracting with them. Basically, like, how do you like anything? Oh, okay. Hey, it looks like about six thousand. Mm-hmm. Thirty, I take thirty percent for nothing. Yeah, that's great. Not nothing substantial. One year you wrote twenty four. But it keeps him happy. Yeah. Oh, it keeps well, it keeps him happy, and you're keeps you. It's free. You no, know, exactly. Was it twenty sixteen? Twenty sixteen, yeah.
Now I'm feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> it always helps. Yeah, I hate these like double questions. I know. Those are I hate, hard. Well, I, I get the, the Roman I know numerals. The which of the Roman numerals is correct? Yeah, exactly. I know the material, but then when they, then I'm close. Yeah. Then you have to. It's like a, it's like a. You have then to eliminate guess, which it, one is right or wrong. And you just guess. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. You're not confident. <laughs> no, you're not. Then you're like, All right. He's ready for us. All right. How far have we gotten as far as the material today? Um, close to half? About seven hours. It's close to half? <laughs> yeah. Well, 10%? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Farther than most, the yeah. reason why is you guys uh, have either studied or you know some of the stuff. Okay. So a lot of times in the class, I have people who never open up the book. It's like everything's brand. It's the point of going. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. I had an all-state agent here a couple of months ago, and she just didn't really care. She was just told they might come. She had to come here. But she didn't study ahead of time. She didn't do anything. Sounds like a win. Yeah, she wanted me to go to the test for it. It's tough. That's hilarious. And then I tried to explain to her how much money she could make if she did this stuff. Uh -huh. And um, people just don't realize how much money you can make. If you want to live more than you can get from the day before you. And they just want to survive instead of do something. Yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you how to go get $200. You go on the internet right now, get $200, and they'll send it to you. So, you know, people are so lazy, they won't even do that. I will be on the computer in a heartbeat. Uh -huh. I know, especially these homeless people and these guys that are barely getting by. $200 is gold. Yeah. So sometimes when I see somebody who's struggling, I'll tell them how to get this money so they can have a little bit more money. And sometimes, that friend said, you know, that's probably a scam. They didn't start it right. Okay. But that's the best I can answer your question. Yeah. Well, these are all, David gets all these not true ones. I know. Yeah, that's like, that doesn't mess me up. The smallest word on the list and all right, which of the following is not true? Saying, so it's one? I, I'd say it's either A or D. If God was giving you a second guess? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not true. Okay. Yes. Adventures are uncentered <laughs> dead instruments. Ivan, what is it? C. And to avoid hell? Oh, B. <laughs> B. See, so secured bonds are issued by mortgages of the real estate of the bonds. Oh, not the corporation. Yeah. Not the full faith and credit. Full faith and credit means we're not putting any collateral up for that. Oh, oh, shit. All right. Up on that. That's tricky. Debentures are unsecured bonds. Secured bonds would have a higher claim to assets than debentures. So this is true. Usually you won't buy a debenture unless it's a well-established company. Okay, Evan, you can go first. Okay. Maybe we'll tell you if you get right or wrong. Our set to limit is my ability. Hey. 
that right, David? Yep, I agree. Yeah. <coughs> Hey, David, you're first, and I have no idea you're gonna write. All right. Because right. Ivan has a portfolio. That was a guess? Yeah, I was thinking, well, the reason I, yeah, that was a guess. I was, I was like, well, what could have the potential for the greatest appreciation of that group? And that would be common stock. Yeah. So preferred stock really is just for income. Yeah. Municipal bonds is to income. avoid taxes and some income. Okay. Uh, so David, that first, I think you to go first. We you going to find one. Good job. So these are the three things what allows you to have a lower sales charge. LOI, 13 months. Mm -hmm. This allows you to use depreciation within your portfolio to get to the next break point. Mm -hmm. And then you pay X amount of dollars to get the break points. Conversion just means you're going to switch it from preferred bonds, prefer, preferred stock or bonds, convert it to common stock. So this would not be applicable to this at all. So, uh, so the broker dealer, uh, he, and we have this word broker dealer. Uh, so one of these are implying that he's selling stock that he doesn't own. Uh, the other one is implying that he is selling his own <coughs> stock to you. So when the broker dealer is selling shares from his own account, they're acting as a principal in the transaction. The keyword is selling out of their own account. Uh huh. Yeah. And that can be a conflict of interest if he doesn't disclose that to you. Okay. Because maybe he's trying to get rid of that stock. Which of those is not an invest under the investment company app? Hedge funds. Hedge has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, so these are under the Investment Act of 1940. Uh, so with the four UIT, Safe Smart, Open End, Closed End Funds, and Manage. So Manage is either open and closed. Okay. But which of the following is not an investment company act of 1940? As long as you know those five, whatever the, the other answer is, like this one here, would be the answer of the test. Cool. So you have unit, investment trust, face amount, open in, closed in, and managed funds. Oh, managed funds. So the managed uh, one is tricky one. Forgot about that open one. And and closed in. funds. Okay. So that's the 1940? Yeah. I guess that's your right now. Closed, open, UIT, face them up, and manage funds, right? Yep. Yeah. They give you those, three of those plus one other, whatever the fourth one yeah, is. Yeah, but who knows which three they pick? Yeah. Uh, I think I haven't got this right before, so maybe we'll see if you get this one right. All right. Um, increase. Increase. Uh, sell treasuries. 
So they're going to sell the treasuries to the banks? Yeah. Which takes away the lending capability. Good job. Balanced stock is growth in income. That's all that means. So, see this A? This is, this is less the same thing. Growth in value stocks. But the value stocks, like the stuff that's on the S&P 500, those are not going to grow very much for the most part. GE has grown a lot. They're one of the better ones at this point in time. But balance means growth of income. Growth, combination of stock hold. I take that back. This is more balance. Stocks and bonds, they didn't even read this one. Yeah, I think they beat. Yeah, so this is, both of these are stocks. This is growth, and this is uh, usually preferred stock. Oh, so, right? Yeah. This will give you income, but not as good as this one. So income securities is preferred stock? Well, it covers bonds more, right? Uh, first question, uh, so on the first question, income securities is not a bond, right? Mm -hmm. um, you said it was preferred stock. I'm trying to think how you would do that. So the income securities could be bonds or preferred stocks, to be honest with you. Because oh. it's not telling me that it's preferred stocks when I say growth and in income. So security could be a, a stock or a bond. Okay. But this is stock and bond. This only pays you income every okay. six months. If this is the income, this is uh, preferred stocks or bonds, it's not as balanced as this guy is. Right, okay. So I didn't bother to read this one. I saw this one and I read this one for that one. My, my bad on that one. Since I messed up, I didn't get this one. Okay. Uh, my name is Morty Nigel Jerry Calder Lee Dallas Shirt. Uh, nice journey. Yeah. Next D. I say D. Yeah. Did they pay pay her the NAB or the POP? Uh the POP. So N A B. So it was redeemed at the NAB. Oh, redeemed. I got yeah. buying. I'm sorry. I misread that. And then you also have the right to reinvest she in that. She was Bonneville selling. I thought she was buying. I just thought yeah. it. I hope I don't read it wrong like that. <laughs> oh, this is a closed in fund. This tells you it's probably selling on the exchange. The, the ask. Or the, uh, the ask can be greater than the bid, the bid can be greater than the ask. What price of customer paid the shares of this company? When you buy a regular mutual fund, are you paying a sales charge or do you pay a commission? Sales charge. You're paying a sales charge. Now, when you uh, do it on the exchange, you're ch being charged a commission, right? Yeah. So it's plus, no, there's, it's built into the whole price. So it's minus the sales charge, right? Or the, what price will customer pay to purchase the shares of the company? Well, in today's market, uh, Stock brokers get a commission on mutual funds, bonds, what else? Mutual funds, bonds, those are only two for the most part, okay. and options. Uh, I'll stay yeah. But I thought for on closed end funds, if the commission was included in the price. It's no, no, no. Changed. You're thinking of uh, that open in mutual fund. Okay. Yeah. Then that's a sales charge. Okay. So, so bid plus a sales charge equals the ask price. You buy at the ask, 
which is the big plus of cells charge. You build into the mutual fund charge. So market makers only do over the counter. Specialist is at, on the floor of the exchange. Market makers are in negotiated markets. Either which one? C or D. C or D? Yeah. Uh, well, that's an interesting answer. So it's not in the B. <laughs> See, they all obligated to honor a price. So if they quote a price, they have to honor it. So this is wrong. Now so it's D. Yeah. D and D. Yeah, he doesn't buy it from other market makers. He just gets uh, from that particular company he represents. That's true. He does not have the inventory. It's not required for the shares for other markets who also specialize. That's true. But this is a better answer. So it is true regarding this market maker who does not have inventory or is not required to purchase shares from that's true, who also specialize in this spot. So B is a better answer than B. A shares are front and low, B shares are uh, rear and low. C is somewhere in between on that one. Isn't C the, the ones they discourage everyone from selling? Where it's every year they charge them like basically a, um, an account fee. Uh, but it's, it's not called that. I don't know what's it called. What do you mean? It's a, it's a high 12B1. Yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. that the highest? Yeah. That's oh, right. the highest 12 but I thought all 12B1 fees were limited to 0.25. It can't or be not over 0.25. They're what? They cannot go over the 12. Yeah. So a lot of the 12B1 fees could be at 0.10. Oh. But the C shares have the highest 12B1 fees, is what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, so it's the C shares always have the highest 12B1 shares. But again, uh, if this is front of the load, does it still have 12B1 fees? The answer is yes. Yeah. Everything has 12B1 fees. But a no load cannot go over 0.25. Okay. So a regular mutual fund can have, be at 0 0.60 as an example if we'd be under this program. So did you just get out of prison, David, or are you okay? What was that? Did you just get out of prison or what? Why? That's right. <laughs> he wasn't looking, that was good. So, uh, we have what, what we call that? statutory disqualification, which means if you've been in trouble in the last 10 years, you're statutorily disqualified from getting this license. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So, what's the best answer here? Interesting. Uh, DUI conviction. Uh, it's a misdemeanor. Uh, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, allegation is perfect. It'd be a uh, D. Which one? B, alleged. See, alleged means that you have no proof. proof. Guilty. So uh, that can't be that one, buddy. Uh, all right. Any written complaint or C. Okay. 
Hep C conviction. Again. Yeah. So it's the conviction. Is that the federal? Okay. What? Just out of curiosity, what what can people do? Like, does that like a drug driving get people like disqualified, or does like how like what what is it? Let's say you rob the bank. Yeah. If you're obviously. exempt. You can't. You, they won't give you a license for ten years. Really? Yeah. So any felonies, you're exempt for 10 years. How about misdemeanors and like stuff like that? Misdemeanors, okay. But what's the thing, um, I had a guy, I almost hired him. He got, because he had a bankruptcy six years before. Yeah, he was like a complicated. That's okay. And I didn't let him because it was too complicated to prove. Who said, who won't let him? Um, fit, uh, my broker dealer. Oh. And, I, and then I, I had to do a bunch of legwork for him, and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I did have the person in class, and he was going to declare bankruptcy. I said, get your license first before you declare bankruptcy. Well, they let him keep his license if yeah. he declared bankruptcy? Yeah. Oh, wow. You just have to disclose it later on. So if David called me up and says, Leo, I want to buy 2,000 shares of IBM. Okay, I'm going to put that order to buy 2,000 shares. The one thing we're not going to have in there is what the commission is. And we don't know if, it's going to, if they're going to fill out the whole order or if it's going to be a partial order. Commission for the order. Why would the commission not be on the order? Well, because we don't know if you can buy it or not. And we don't know if they're going to be able to fill up the whole order. I put an order in to buy something to this morning, uh, 2,000 shares or something. Okay. They filled part of it, was a share of the stock. So it wasn't a complete order. So you can't put the commissions in for 2,000, but I only got one, one share. Oh. oh, okay. But usually on stock, there's no commissions in. So some broker dealers still charge, mm -hmm. and a lot of them do not charge. Call, put, buy, sell. Protect market gains should uh, protect gains by a call. Or so. So it's by going up. Call. By call. You're doing the same thing. Well, you said going up, right? Oh, look at the up arrow over there. So. But you had the gain. You had the gains going up. How would you protect them? If, it, if you bought the stock at $50 and so you want to buy a put. Right. See? Yeah. Put. All right, so investor who wants to protect market gain. Because if the stock goes down, that means you get to sell it to the seller of the put. Buy the put, okay. Yeah. To prevent it from going down. Well, if you buy it at 50, right? Mm -hmm. Now you buy a put option that's 50. So if the stock goes down to 42, you have a right to exercise that. He's got to buy it from you at 50. Okay. You protect your, your uh, gain. So protecting it, protecting against the, the, the damage the by a foot. foot. Okay. Because you're a little bit rough on this one, I have to give you a number. Yeah. I thought I was Not right. this one, this one won't count. Uh, so remember U and T? This is uh, red U is what the bank charges the broker dealer, red T is what the broker dealer charges the client. Uh, so it's got to be one of these other two. It won't be this one. It's not rule 72 for sure. <laughs> policy for you to get custody. You have cyber attack on unauthorized access. Uh, SP is... Safeguard procedures. Yeah, there's more ads on TV for pharmaceuticals than anything else. Yes. 
So yeah, some of the new medicines are two million to two and a half million a piece. What's that? Some of the new uh, pharmaceutical medicines coming out nowadays are two to two and a half million a piece. Really? Mm -hmm. Whoa. So can you elaborate a little bit on that one? Yeah, some of the new uh, cutting edge pharma stuff coming out. Uh, like I have a friend who sells uh, oncology medicine and it's $2.2 .2 million single dose uh, and it cures like 90% of all the cancer out of your body. Wow. Uh, so it's very effective. Wow. But the insurance companies don't want to reimburse for it because it's less expensive to have someone go through chemo and radiation and all that, which will cost about a million dollars. So it's a lot less for their clients to die than it would be to treat them. Well, yeah. what are the side effects? I don't know, I'm not a big well, fan. It's a, it's a really what good, are the side effects of the drug? It's very little. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. I might have to stay up with a little bit more money. I know, right? Yeah. Back up. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, some of the, you're going to see some amazing drugs come out in the next five to ten years. Yeah, next five ten years, going to see some amazing stuff. Wow, I even I didn't know that. Yeah. You finally you taught me something. Thank uh, you, thank you. And you would think you know, people would know that stuff, but they don't share that information now. Mm -hmm. Unless you got a couple million dollars in the bank already. Or could I? I, and I don't know the answer. Could I go to Mexico and get that at a discount? <laughs> no, the cutting edge ones, yeah. it's pretty much two and a half million anywhere in the world. Okay. You want to get it. Okay. How about if you go to Asia, even less? Yeah, it's still be, <laughs> yeah, it's still be two and a half million. So. It's like, you know, if you need dental work, a lot of people go down to Mexico mm -hmm. and get it done down there. It's 20% of the price. Yeah. But this yeah. would not be the same. No. Nope. How do you know? Do you take some of those drugs? No, no. I have a friend who uh, is a sales rep for their oncology division. Did you ask him for a bill for emergencies? <laughs> is, there, is there a cash payment for less? No. <laughs> Sometimes they'll, they have the pharmaceutical companies will offer what they call a rebate program. So if someone is in, they don't have the fun money, which is most people, they'll give a portion of it back. But they'll ask for a large sum up front. So it might bring your total cost down to like Whoa. a million, million and a half. Now, would most doctors already know about that thing? Not unless the pharmaceutical rep. Really? Talk about to open it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, some people say, you know, oh, go to Stanford. Now, Stanford would probably know about that. I'm going to guess. They might. A lot of people who are doing uh, some type of a treatment, I've heard. The nurses that you know go down to Stanford, mm -hmm. and then Stanford's been able to heal, heal them. So I'm assuming that they're more cutting edge than some of the places up here. Mm -hmm. San Jose. Yeah, I mean, there's certain. It depends on which hospital you're going to. It has, you know, like uh, MD Anderson is really good for cancer uh, out of Texas. So. Mm -hmm. Stanford's really good for that. Well, I'm glad I'm saving my money up. I'm pretty <laughs> cheap on stuff, so uh, I saved my money. And ever since I was a kid, my brother and sister was trying to find my money when I was a kid because I had saved and they'd spend. But this is good to know. I like that. I never thought about that. Oh, uh, sorry about that. I gave you the answer. Yeah. Uh, Pulling off period. When you submit the registration to be a corporation, uh, and they approve you, they have a 20 day cooling off period. So during the cooling off period, the mission may do any of the following, except you can't save the orders. Uh, you can't accept any orders. Cooling off, not accept orders, okay. So the cooling off period is usually 20 days. You can publish on a tombstone ad that you're gonna be selling the stock. Uh, you can distribute a preliminary prospectus, which is your red herring. You can discuss the offering price, but you can't, you don't, you're not locked into any price. Okay. 
never. never. We, they used to do this. They said, well, if you do this and then you rate that 9%, you're going to make this much. Or if it's at 15%, you're going to get this much. Variable life. Yeah. Yeah. So the answer is never? Yeah, never ever. Then my So you don't know what these are, right? The local call rate is probably the highest, right? That's what they charge the, uh, the person, right? When they borrow money for budget? Here's what these for. Oh, the oh, highest so they rate. They charge their, their favorite clients. They <laughs> charge another bank, okay. I, that fund rate is probably the lowest. Really? Yeah. The so, lowest, okay. Yeah. And the answer was what is the highest? Yeah. So, uh, what banks charge broker dealers? A broker call rate? Uh, the broker call rate, the banks charge uh, broker dealers like 1.5%. Oh, so that's really low. And the broker dealers add an extra 10% on top of it. Mm -hmm. when you borrow the money. So, what's the answer? Yes. Prime rate is what we charge our best customers. Like you're buying a house, yeah. we're gonna charge you seven and a half percent. But the broker car rate is <coughs> like 1.5. This is the lowest. Uh, and then the Federal Reserve will charge something low to the banks. Mm -hmm. So the answer is the prime rate? Yeah. So what banks charge their favorite customers? Okay. I like the wording on this. You think it's going to, oh, that, they get yeah. a good rate. So you have to know all four of these for this okay. Uh, okay. This one, you could take a picture of David. But no, okay. if you don't want to, that's fine. No, I'd love to. I've taken pictures. I've taken so many pictures of them. Okay. Did you take a picture of Ivan? No. Yeah, what the hell? I killed Scooby. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think uh, about reading this. Backing away is a market maker has to honor their price, so he can't back away from what he honors. So I think that's what it is, but let me see. Oh, yeah. Reporting him to SEC and he get in trouble for not honoring his price. So he filed registration. Uh, he's allowed to go and talk about what he's doing. During the roadshow, they said, I'm going to be 2024. He said, you don't lock this in until after the cooling off period. Several broker dealers gave indications of interest of $20 for a share. They can indicate whatever they want to. You're not locked in for that. When the shares were released, the offer price was $40. Which of the following is a true, true statement? <coughs> So they didn't act in properly. So they can talk about it oh. if they want to. <coughs> I'd say it's true. Hey. See the blue highlighted area? Oh, no. I did not see One day. <laughs> That was tricky. It was too close. Oh. <laughs> Let me move this back. You need some goggles or something. <laughs> I do. Uh, no, no. So you can talk about price, but you're not obligated to go with that Does price. I have to offer shares below yeah. the offer. Yeah. Well, it might be something at $20.
You can't, you can't do that. You, who's working for a technology, tremendous technology, you cannot walk in and be Christ with that. That's illegal to do. So <coughs> in the system, you can ask to have a list of which companies are going to have a pay a dividend. Then it, what happens usually is the net stock will go up. So right before that point. So it doesn't do you any good because uh, you, you're paying a higher price for the stock anyways. Mm -hmm. What happens in the market is that when interest rates rise, your portfolio is going to go down. Mm -hmm. I like that. Because those are fixed. The bonds you have, your interest rates are fixed. So on credit placement, we don't get prospectuses. We you did a confidentiality agreement, a subscription yeah. agreement, and a term sheet. A uh, term sheet that says you have to keep this uh, stock for one year before you can uh, sell the stock. So private placement, you don't need a prospectus? No. The only time you need a prospectus is when you're selling to the general public. Tricky one. Current fund holdings? Because they can change? Good job on that one. Because if the prospectus was written a month it ago, could change today. Who, what's, what's current? Okay. Yeah. So 21 fees are not considered part of the fees and expenses. Uh, they always say that that's for. Advertising and marketing is not considered part of the fees for the fund. Easy one. All in there. All in there. Yeah. You have to know all four of these if you have a little bit of concerns. Then by underwriting, that's where the broker is selling by in case you don't uh, uh, take your option to buy the stock. So best up, you sell what you can. For example, we're going to sell all of it within two months. Whatever we don't sell, we're going to buy. It is true. So when they freeze your account, what they'll do is they'll allow you to do cash investments. You can't do anything on margin. Okay, no trades may be made. You can do cash trades. Cash trades? Trades and no business. I see. See? So that's a good one. That's a tough one. Always see, right? That's tough. Well, you can't always pay it on the day of the trade, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, you could buy the settlement date. Existing companies may be sold, but no, no, no new companies may Maybe be deep. purchased. Well, may be made once they're paid for on the date of the trade. So that's the cash. Yeah, that's cash. But you said it may not be possible to do that. You, if they freeze your account yeah. for 90 days, you just can't buy anything on margin. That all has to be all cash. Okay. And 
what's free riding now? What's free riding? I, I have no idea. He had no idea. Can you ask him tomorrow? Uh, free ride. So I have a computer with you. What does free riding mean in securities? Free riding, also known as free riding or free riding, is a term used in stock trading to describe the practice of buying and selling shares or other securities without actually having the capital to cover the trade. What? Do you want to repeat it again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> understand that. normal language. So, you're buying a short sell? You're, you're borrowing the stock from your broker dealer because you uh, and you don't have to buy it from them. It's not buying it from them. So you're using his shares to sell to somebody else right now uh -huh. and you don't have the money and then when the stock goes down, it allows you to buy it. So it's kind of like free riding. Oh. I'm going to put Alexa in here too so we can always ask her. You should do that. It's, uh, I, I use my Alexa a lot. Yeah. Sometimes an interesting thing comes out of her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling my wife, you know, we got to put one in the kitchen, one in the living room, so people can talk to Alexa. And I told her, you got to put a couple in the office. Yeah. So I think it's fun. That's a good idea, actually. Actually, what I was going to do is I was going to put some TVs in here that talks about stocks so people can kind of look at the stock market and then ask questions so my son he's got like four of them in his room for those are tickers yeah tickers uh and he's a dad this one does this this one does this and I'm pretty cool yeah Most of these, uh, three these years. answers is what? Three years. A lot of these are actually three years. Yeah. So I don't know if this one, about three this years three this one. But three years, if you don't know it, is always a good answer. Okay. Well, well, what time is it? Okay, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same you station. Early? Uh, <laughs> when got us early? Did you run out of electricity? <laughs> <laughs> the power is, yeah, the power is. Alexa um, turned off automatically. <laughs> Alexa said, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of ahead of the game, so that's kind of good. Oh. We do some more. Okay, we'll see how many you can write in the row. And then I will figure out how many do you write in a row. So, because we were talking about this, so do you remember the answers? Okay, how would the Fed add money to the economy? They would buy treasuries, sell treasuries. <laughs> okay, you have to be zero. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I gotta be zero, so I gotta yeah. be zero. Give us this issue with the right to call, call. You give me the easy one. Call, sure. call both the first stock. One. Participating for first Good job two. Again, you have to know all four of these. Okay, Dave, you got to be two. All right. I couldn't even get off the ground last time. <laughs> so par is uh, accounting number, uh -huh. generally minimal, as determined by the issuer. I thought and par is like standard, like 100 for stocks and 1,000 for bonds. Uh, thousand That's what everyone bonds. would always say. Like, what's the par value of a bond? Like, let's say 98, which is like 90. 
Well, when you're creating your corporation, uh, the person that's using your accountant is helping you, yeah. and you might say, hey, what do you want the par value of your stock to be? Can okay. you have that stock, uh -huh. right? And you can say 10 cents or whatever it is. It has nothing to do with the market price, okay. though. And we talked about this, we talked about that. So you gotta be two. Okay. Our time is working so um, except the um, A is true. Okay. B. That's one. Good job. Suitability requires all the following. Okay. Sign authorization is not required for client transmissions, unsolicited results from three different. So you don't need one. On the, yeah, on three separate days. Yeah, that's okay. So that is okay? Yeah. But the one that's not okay always requires sign disclosure agreements. Oh, but there's that word always. So you have to start all over again. You have okay. to beat two, okay? <laughs> Easy one. All right, uh, B. That's one. But this is information. For the one position in the short is. Which is not true. Okay. Uh, see? Yep. All right. Uh, so true. Short sellers are bullish. That's A. That's your answer? Yeah. Good job. That's two. Got to get one more. You're yes. out of the game for a while. All right. The information contained in perspective is old because 16 months. Three. I'll just keep going because he's going to have roll. the choice. All right. How much are going to be on all the wrong rights? Expect. Uh, A. Four. It'd be size and type. C. Ivan? What's up? What's the answer? What did he say? Huh? What did he say? <laughs> oh, he said size and type. I said size. C. Size and type. Um, the commission. Commission. He did this one before. It would not be a factor. Be a See, size and type is a factor. See you guys tomorrow, same time, same cool. station. Good job. All right, thanks. We're heading to the gate. Okay. I, I thought for sure you could get.
get that one. The commission would not be a factor. Thanks, Lee. Hey, pleasure. My pleasure. All right, Lee. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you okay. tomorrow. As long as you guys have the book read, that's all I care about. As long as you have the no, book read. Okay. Hey, do you recommend you read that book, or what do you recommend? Uh, that's a good Would book. You skim, skim through it, or what? Skim through it, you know, based on the stuff we talk about. And what, what kind of... Yeah. You need to brush up on, brush up on it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a lot to read in three days. Test. Yeah, I didn't remember. I, there might have been like all I can remember was like, you know, uh, you call up, call someone up, and put someone down. Yeah, that's all you remember for the last time. So yeah, now there's a lot more to it. Okay, got my work cut out for me. Good. Yeah? I think I'm getting there. All right. We'll see you in the morning. We'll have a uh, coffee ready for you. All right. Good.